Maybe it's a classic or maybe a flop. Has Katie seen it? She probably has not. She'll sit down and watch it if it's good or it's bad. Hey, have you seen this? No, Katie hasn't seen that. Hi, I'm Katie, and if I had a nickel for every time someone said to me, wait, you haven't seen this movie? Oh my god, you need to see this movie. I'd be very rich. So this is my podcast, where I finally watch those movies you all have told me I need to see, and I tell you what I think. Spoilers and possessions are ahead today on Katie Hasn't Seen That. I'm watching The Exorcist today. Oh my. I have been putting off watching The Exorcist for, I would say, my entire life. I don't like possession movies. Possession movies are horrifying. I saw The Exorcism of Emily Rose in college, and I swear to God, I woke up at 3 a.m. most nights after that, and I was like, yeah, this is it. The devil's gonna get me. This is my time to become a minion of the devil, and uh, there's no priest that could save me. By the time I'm recording this, it is getting close to spooky season, aka Halloween, so it felt appropriate to finally watch The Exorcist. This movie is from 1973. It's older than I thought, which makes me go, is it going to be scary? Because you know how sometimes older movies just are like, for the time they were good, for the time they were scary? I'm also concerned because I've heard those rumors that this movie is cursed. But here's the thing. I know a little bit more about The Exorcist than I do other movies I've watched for Katie Hasn't Seen That because I watched a documentary on Shudder called Cursed. Excuse me. It was a documentary series called Cursed Films. It was like a collection of movies that were famous horror movies. And they talked about how they had myths and legends behind them and that, oh, on the set it was cursed and this bad thing happened. It was a really interesting documentary series. I love documentaries. I guarantee that if y'all recommended documentaries to me, I probably have seen them. So if you have Shudder, I recommend the Cursed Films documentary series. There's only like six episodes. They talk about The Exorcist, Poltergeist, The Omen, and a couple others. The last episode was a beast though. So I'm just saying it's a very interesting series. So I know a little bit about The Exorcist. I know a young gal gets possessed and then the priests come in to try to Depossessor. Is that a real depossession? What is it? Exor exorcism. I guess exorcise the demons from her. I know there's a part where she takes a, a, a cross and stabs herself in the area a lot. I know she floats above the bed. She vomits and her head spins around as well as I think she pees herself on the stairs. I don't know if that happens or not. I guess I'll find out. There was something interesting though from that cursed films documentary series I watched there's a scene in it where like she's in the bed and she's getting like shaken around a whole bunch because they had like a specific harness on her. And the girl who plays, I don't even know the character's name, the little girl in it said she actually hurt her back really, really badly during that because the harness wasn't hooked on correctly. And they used that shot in the film. So the final shot in the film is where she actually got hurt pretty bad because she was not hooked up to one of the machines properly, which that's kind of awful, isn't it? I feel like that's kind of awful. The Exorcist. I love spooky scaries. If you watch me on Twitch, you know I play a lot of sci-fi and a lot of horror games. I play mostly horror games and search them out. I don't necessarily search out horror movies, but I love the genre. I watch a lot of horror on television and in movies, and it's just kind of my... I don't know. There's just something about that genre that speaks to me, which I don't... Let's not analyze that. But... This one is a classic. The Exorcist is a well-known horror movie that is deeply ingrained in, in societal everything because at the time it was like very controversial and it's kind of stood the test of time. I'm very curious if I will walk away from this movie being scared or kind of going, oh, okay. I mean, they, uh, yeah. I'm very curious if this movie will actually scare me, but I'm also kind of nervous to watch it. I'm just saying, I'm actually nervous to watch this one. It's like that kind of thing where you're like, oh, it's a movie about demons. And if I watch a movie about demons, it means demons are real. And it also means that all of a sudden I'm going to be cursed. But I believe millions of people, I think, at this point have seen The Exorcist and they've been okay. So I should be okay too, right? Correct? Please tell me yes. This movie has an 8 out of 10 on Internet Movie Database, 83% on Rotten Tomatoes, 81% on Metacritic, 
and 87% of Google users like this movie. So there's an 80-20 chance that I'm gonna like this. So a lot of times movies have had good ratings, doesn't necessarily jive with me all the time. So we'll see. This movie, I want, y'all, two hours and 12 minutes. This movie is two hours and 12 minutes long. I bet it's a pretty hefty exorcism story in this. And um, let's just hope by the end that little girl is free. That little girl is free of whatever demon made her vomit pea soup and stab herself in the nethers. Okay, I'm gonna watch this at night, which seems like a really bad idea. And I'm gonna make some mac and cheese, which also seems like a bad idea since vomiting is prevalent in this movie. But I'm gonna go watch this and I'll be back and hopefully not cursed and let you know what I think. I did the thing. I watched The Exorcist. I, I ate my food prior to watching The Exorcist and I think that was the smart move. I think that that was something that was important to watching this movie because this movie at times was just kind of gross and I'm just gonna put that out there immediately. I didn't realize this movie is based on a book. It's based on a book by the same name, The Exorcist, written by William Peter Blatty. That's a fun name to say. And it was written in 1971, so it was only written two years prior to the movie being made. So this, I don't know, maybe was The Exorcist like a huge thing when it came out as a book and then someone was like, we gotta make this into a movie, which happens a lot. And I've talked about this. So many of these movies I've watched and just movies in general are based on books. Books are the superior medium. And maybe we should just all use our theater of mind. But then Katie hasn't seen that wouldn't exist. So Hollywood, just keep doing what you're doing. This movie started off a lot differently than I expected. We're in Iraq. There's a priest that's also an archaeologist and they're finding things. And something that they're alluding to is a sinister force. That's it kind of comes back into play later, but not really. So really, this movie starts off in Iraq where they're they're digging up artifacts and things and i think the implication is that ooh, we found something that huh might be a little sinister but you really didn't need to have that in the movie at all it kind of comes back into the part where the exorcism actually happens and there's like a flash at one point and you see that giant statue that the priest finds in the desert in the beginning of the movie but really the whole portion with the rack didn't need to be there but it, it was there. And so the movie just kind of started off a lot differently than I expected. And there was a point where they're starting to build the tension in the movie and they're still in Iraq and the priest is there talking to somebody and then the clock just stops in the background. And I was like, ooh, that was a bit spooky scary. I, I can get behind that. This movie, though, felt really long. I it, the one. OK, the version I watched was about two hours. I don't know why I keep getting misinformation on Google about the the length of these movies, but the version I watched was about two hours. There was a director's cut I could have watched, but I was like, nope, gotta keep it old school. Gotta go with the theatrical release. And so I watched that one. It just had so many different threads in it than I expected, like the mom being an actress and the build with just the dynamic between the mom and Re Reagan. Regan? Reagan? How do you say her name? I'm gonna call her Re Reagan. I think it was Reagan. Like the president. But it's just this movie had such a slow build and how many stories are intertwined in this is not expected as well. There's just so many stories to this. This movie is a slow burn. You wait a good, oh, I don't know, hour and 45 minutes, hour and a half until something like happens. And this is why I think the part with the rack didn't need to be there because the way that I felt this movie went was Reagan got possessed because she played with a Ouija board. And so there was no real reason for the whole Iraq sequence because I think she just met, messed around with the Ouija board and talked to, I mean, was Captain Howdy? Captain Howdy was the name that she called the thing that answered back on the Ouija board. Was Captain Howdy the devil that got inside of her for the rest of this movie? And I apologize now, I know it's devil, but I'm probably gonna call it devil because I think it's funny. There's just so much backstory. We're learning about Reagan and her mom, the famous actress filming in Georgetown. We're learning about priests. There were so many priests. Now, for most of this movie, there's a priest named Damien. And the entire time, I could not figure out if his name was Demi, Timmy, Tommy. And it wasn't until the exorcism scene that my husband and I worked out, oh, his name is Damien. But there was so much backstory on Damien. 
I don't know why. Maybe it's because it's what the media feeds you. I just assumed that it was constantly Devil Girl in the room for the majority of this movie. I feel like nowadays, if this was made, people would be like, it's not scary enough. There's not enough happening with the, the horror aspect of it. I just didn't expect there to be so much lead up to the actual exorcism. I'm pretty sure the devil was in the attic because the mom kept coming out at night and hearing things scurrying about in the attic. So I think the implication was that Captain Howdy was in the attic and by Reagan playing with the Ouija board, boom, bam, instant possession. It's like instant ramen, but with devils instead. There was some weirdly awkward long conversation and shots in this movie, such as when Reagan and her mom are talking about what they're going to do for Reagan's birthday and that the mom could invite, I think it was the director because the, the girl thought that they they were an item. And it was just like a really weird conversation. But in reality, it was a very realistic conversation. It just felt like some of the shots lingered a little too long. And I, I felt a little bit like, oh, I OK, I mean, you guys are talking. I think it did a good job because it's like, hey, this is what their relationship is like. So when later on Reagan is possessed by a demon, it goes to show, oh, she's like usually this like innocent, sweet girl who's just wanting to steal cookies. Because l lest we forget the great cookie theft of 73. Later in the movie, I think it made more sense to me like, oh, they had some of those longer shots and interactions between characters because it shows such a contrast from when she's possessed to when she's just like, hey, I'm a girl who doesn't remember what happened to me. Which let's just say, at the end of the movie, Reagan doesn't remember the possession or what happened at all. But that doesn't mean that everyone else is going to forget. Just literally, if you have seen The Exorcist, how much PTSD is floating amongst those people that do remember? Let's just put that out there. Great that Reagan doesn't remember, but some of those people are going to need to be in therapy for the rest of their lives. There was a part in this movie too where a priest goes into the church and there's like a statue of Mother Mary, I think, and someone had paper mouche paper mouche some pointy boobs and a pointy dong along onto this Mother Mary statue. But that was never really resolved. I don't think like, okay, there's another layer to this movie. There's a homicide detective. So this homicide detective comes in because essentially Reagan gets possessed. We, the viewer knows this, but mother of Reagan goes, oh my God, my daughter's not right. Let's do all of the medical things. And so they're in the hospital. They're trying to figure out what's wrong with Reagan. And then essentially the doctors all go, we can't find anything wrong with her. Have you tried exorcism? But throughout all of that, the mother's trying to deal with the medical tests because she's a famous actress. She's got a personal assistant. She's got a staff that can take care of her home and cook her food and friends like Burke, who I believe was the director of the movie the actress mom was starring in. Burke was helping watch Reagan while the mother was getting test results on her daughter. But uh-uh-uh. Burke apparently got pushed out of a window and his head got turned around backwards and then he died on a very precarious stairwell right outside of Reagan's window. So boom, bam, we got another layer of murder mystery in here now. We all know it was the devil that did it, but this movie had like so many things going on in it. It was a weird experience at times. I guess to bring it back to the Mother Mary statue with the pointy boobs and the dong along, was it insinuated that Reagan did that? Like she went to the church and like paper mache some boobs and a dong onto Mother Mary? It was never really completely ever tied together. At the beginning of the movie, Reagan was working on arts and crafts. I got out of breath there for a second. She... <laughs> I have a lot to say about this movie. She was working on like arts and crafts. So I don't know if it was just meant to be like breadcrumbs to kind of go, oh, I think she may have done that. Kind of weird though, that that's what the devil's like, gotta do this really obscene thing on the statue. Like, I feel like there's so much more mischief that this specific demon could have done, but instead was like, you know what? We're gonna break into that church and we're, you know what? Get that paper mache mix and let's make some pointy boobs and a pointy dong along on that Mother Mary statue. It is gonna raise some eyebrows. This whole time you're watching the movie, you just kind of get a feeling like, oh, I think this is gonna be disturbing. And this movie is a little bit disturbing, but it's it's not on the level of the exorcism of Emily Rose. Like this movie is a fairly tame exorcism movie, in my opinion, which in hindsight, very grateful for. I did sleep with the light on. You can judge me, okay? But I'm just gonna say it was more as a precaution. 
I wasn't really that scared, but I was also like, just in case. I also didn't realize this movie is called The Exorcist and not The Exorcism. Like I knew that, but then as I'm watching it, I'm like, oh, this is more about the process than it is about the actual exorcism itself. There's a pivotal scene where there's a party at mom's house. Mom's a big famous Hollywood actress. She's got people to meet and greet and talk to. And so it's like a wild party. People are drunk. People are having a good time. There are so many priests at her party. I realize priests are like very prevalent in this movie, but like all these people knew so many priests. Like, I mean, I I just didn't understand the, the sheer amount of priests that existed in this movie, but maybe there was just, whoa, what was that? Okay, I thought I heard something. Everything's fine. Oh no, is this when the curses start? Am I cursed? I think I might be cursed. Oh Jesus. Anyway, uh, there's just, there was a, there were a lot of priests and I wasn't quite sure how they all knew each other. But you know what? That doesn't really matter. But this is the moment where Reagan comes down the stairs and says, you're gonna die up there and pees herself. However, this would be spooky scary if I was back in 73. If you're an adult and you are aware of the scary movie franchise, there is a thing in the first five minutes of either the first or the second scary movie, which I haven't seen either of those, but I've seen this scene where they make fun of the exorcist and the girl comes down the stairs and literally pees like seven gallons of pee and it's like a big joke. So that is what I thought of when she did that whole thing. But from her mother's perspective, that would be horrifying. And right after that is when the bed quakes start happening, which granted, that would be absolutely horrifying. If you're in bed and your bed is just literally being lifted off the ground by the corners. I did very much appreciate the practical effects and what they did for the scary elements of this movie. You think about the time frame that this was made in in 1973, they did a stellar job of making things look realistic. And also there's just something special about practical effects instead of CGI. So I think that kind of nerd part of my brain where I'm like, ooh, they actually did that, makes me very excited. Like when the holy water is is hitting her leg and the, the lesion appears on her leg, that's pretty damn cool. They didn't have the kind of CGI like Jurassic Park. Why did I go to Jurassic Park as my example? Transformers-esque uh, type of CGI nowadays. So it, it's just cool when you see those things kind of come to life. And I've always appreciated that. I have to just bring this up. There was a lot of drinking and smoking in this movie, just like an, an insane amount of chain smoking, an insane amount of drinking. And there was one point, one of the priests who was at the party met up with Damien. And I think Damien's mother had died. There, the whole Damien mother situation was kind of confusing. We just, I'm not gonna get into it. It was just that whole part never was super clear. But anyway, Damien, one of the main priests dealing with the fact of the loss of his mother and one of his priest friends comes back from the party, they chat and the, the friend is like, I'm gonna put you to bed. But he puts him to bed with a lit cigarette in his hand and they had both been drinking. And I'm like, this is just not safe. And there's also a scene where the doctor comes out to talk to the mother and he immediately lights a cigarette. And I'm just like, those were different times, but it's it's so glaringly apparent in this movie just how prevalent smoking was apparently in the 70s that I just, I, I just don't understand. And also the fact that doctors back then were like, yeah, smoking's great. So that, that from a cultural point of view was eye-opening. I think one of the untold horrors of this movie are the medical procedures that they do on Reagan. And like even just how much our medical system has come since the 70s, thank God. But when they're doing her brain scans and just putting contrast into her, her body, just all of that was horrifying. Those, 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 sca those brain scan machines. I was like, is this, th that added a layer of horror, which I don't know if it was supposed to, but it did because of how primitive it looked. Some of this movie was funny. It was a little over dramatic at times, kind of overacted. There was some cursing in it, which I'm like, for the time, maybe that was like, ooh, big, you know, big things that they use the f word. I felt like the devil voiceover could have been better at times. The first time it happens, it was a little bit like, it didn't match up quite for me. And after that, it got better. But literally the things that would come out of that little girl's mouth were super, super filthy and awful. And I, I don't know, I mean, you know, I can't, I don't really say it on the podcast, but things like sucker and me, that kind of stuff. You know, it, it makes sense. Like I think at the time it was salacious, 
However, I have some thoughts on that later as well. People did not enunciate well in this movie. There were times where I'm like, I don't know what they said, but you know, they moved their mouth. Some of the cinematography was really neat. I love some of the lighting that they did in this movie. So from a purely movie making point of view, did enjoy. At times, I felt like all of the men in this movie kind of looked the same, especially the doctors. So there was some moments where I'm like, wait, did we meet this guy before? And that's just me being overly analytical of a movie, especially when I'm doing it for Katie hasn't seen that. It was interesting throughout this movie, the devil would make, or I guess Reagan as the devil, I don't know, would make a super loud sound upstairs or something. And like the mom would have a delayed reaction or people would have a delayed reaction. And that was always kind of interesting to me. I'm like, that was friggin' loud. That could have just been like a sound editing thing. And I'm starting to believe now that sound editing in movies Yes, is very hard, but I think it's kind of rare when you find that perfectly edited movie. That sound levels with the voice and the music and the sound effects is just like mwah, chef's kiss. I think those are more rare than I realize. Or as I age, my hearing is getting worse and I don't hear as well. Could be one of those two things, but I do think sound editing is a very beautiful art form. And when it's not done right, it's really easy to hear it. There are moments throughout this movie where like things happen that are pretty graphic with the little girl. When I watched that documentary, there were moments in the movie that Linda Blair, who played Reagan, they had like a body double for her. So for the more adult things that happened in the movie, which I'm like, a lot of that was adult stuff. She would do it. But one of the things that I, I had heard about and actually watching it in the movie, I was like, oh my God, was when she does stab herself in the lady parts very graphically uh, with a cross. And then she tells her mom to her and then takes her mom's head and like tries to shove it down there. Like That was a lot. That was a lot that made me uncomfortable. And that brings up something I wanted to talk about because at this time this movie came out, this movie was all over the news. Like, oh, I fainted at this movie. People are walking out. It's so controversial. And I'm like, nowadays, if this movie was made, it'd be like, yeah, yeah. I mean, they made that Exorcist movie. It's fine. It wasn't enough, you know, gore and blood. Like you compare Saw or friggin' Hostel to a movie like The Exorcist, not even on the same playing field. I don't know if in 73, this was actually controversial because it brought in the fact of religion and people who were like, don't you deal with my religion and mix that up with things like that or the fact that it deals with devils and exorcisms and that kind of thing. So that might be one of the nuanced layers of it. But overall, the movie's not really that graphic compared to our standards nowadays, which I don't know what that says about our society, but things are changing. Again, because I watched that documentary, it was said because it's good for selling tickets and it's good for creating controversy because then people want to go see the movie that all of this stuff were about people fainted. There's ambulances outside of the, the movie theaters for people who go see Exorcist that it was done for PR, that it was done to drum up news and bring people in that way. So as I also get older and see how corrupt our society and lives are, and how businesses, especially businesses in the business of making money, I don't think that's too far from the truth. Drumming up controversy in order to sell tickets, I could see it happening. One of the saddest things though, is that it brought up a lot of issues for the girl who played Reagan, Linda Blair. And if you look into all of the stuff that she went through after this movie was made and with her being labeled as cursed and the movie production being labeled as cursed, it's like people love to search that stuff out, even if it's unwarranted, but it makes money. So that was just something I was thinking about as I was watching this. Here's the thing. When the exorcism starts, our boy, archaeologist man from Iraq has come back and he is going to help with this exorcism. So it's Damien and the man from the beginning of this movie. The start of the exorcism is so uncomfortable. Riveting is the best way to put it. There's a moment during the exorcism where the bed rises off of the ground and there's a lack of music during the exorcism, which I think was such an amazing mechanism to use because it built the tension. There's nothing to tell you that something scary is going on or how you're supposed to feel because you watch a YouTube video nowadays, a smart editor will put in sad music, goofy music, happy music, you know, angry music, things that will trigger your brain subliminally to go, oh, this is how I should feel about this. And there's a couple of YouTubers I can mention, but I'm not going to, who use that tool very effectively. But what I appreciated about this is that it was focused on what was happening in the movie and you were 
able to make your own assumptions about stuff and feel things the way that you wanted to feel it. And there was that one part where there's no music, no one's talking, the bed just rises off the ground. And it was truly like spine chilling, if you will. I felt the music in this movie was utilized very well. And I liked where they chose to omit it and let the movie speak for itself. This movie is kind of gross. She throws up a lot. I was right about that. My husband said that her puke kind of looked like Gak. And if you are aware of Nickelodeon Gak, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Just really viscous green liquid constantly being puked about the room. And there's a moment where she just straight up pukes on Damien and it gets in his mouth. I don't even know, okay? Like, I, I can't even be in a room with somebody who's puking and not want to also puke myself. So... That's just something that I, it kind of made me go, oh, this is gross. However, if you're possessed by a devil, things are bound to get gross, I think. So during this whole exorcism, this is where a lot of the practical effects shine. It was a pretty cool sequence. I felt like this movie was pretty damn boring, but I could not look away during the exorcism. It got a little goofy when there's a moment with her all like silhouetted and there's that statue from the Iraqi desert where I'm like, that, you know, you don't really need to tie those two entities together, but you did. I could have done without that, but overall, the whole sequence with the exorcism is pretty intense and pretty well done. During this whole exorcism sequence, it's exhausting for the priests. The one from Iraq dies because I think the devil was too strong. And then Damien, who was kind of like, he was the bad boy priest, if we're really going to go there. He was like the bad boy priest where he's like, I don't know if I'm cut out for this, but... He literally starts beating up Reagan like, yes, yeah, she's possessed, but like literally punching her in the face and yelling, take me instead, take me instead. And so our boy, the devil, takes hold of Damien. And then what he does is he throws himself out the window and dies like he sacrifices himself to hopefully save this little girl and give this entity no place to live. I didn't see that coming at all. I didn't know that was how this movie ended. But I actually really liked it. I thought it was a very thought-provoking ending to this movie. And my husband watches these with me. And he brought up a discussion point at the end where it was like, well, Damien is de like dying at the bottom of these stairs. And another priest shows up and is like doing the whole like, do you have any sins you want to atone for and stuff? And so my husband was like, does that mean that the devil atoned for his sins and he can get into heaven? But that's a whole other discussion. And I'm just going to like plant that little nugget in the back of your head to think about. Overall, there are so many layers to this movie, some of which I think they could have done without. There is a trip to Iraq. There are cops. There's religion. There's murder. There's possession and the movie business. It just it felt like there was a lot going on. It's not like you couldn't keep up with it. It, it at times felt a little disjointed. I don't think we needed the homicide detective or the trip to Iraq. Though overall, I can't really complain too much. I did realize about halfway through, this movie is mostly a discussion of an exorcism versus an actual exorcism. It is building up to that. And I think it is worth the ride to get to it. But based on nowadays where it's like our ADHD brains are like, I want more. I think that it's... It's definitely a slow burn horror movie. We recently watched Insidious, which I heard was one of the scariest movies ever made. And it was very bad. It was not scary. That movie was awful about doing music cues to tell you how you feel while you're watching it. It was just not a good movie. And so watching this, I was like, this is kind of like a horror movie done right. I wish there was more things throughout it like supernatural-esque, but I still can appreciate what they did for the time. And I think when you get to the exorcism part, it's it's intense and you want to know what happens. So overall, thank you all for making me watch this movie. I liked it. I don't think it's at the top of my list. I think I've seen it once. I'm good. I don't really need to ever see it again. I'm going to give it six out of 10. The power of Christ compels you. If you're looking for like an older horror movie, I would say this would be the one to go. I have watched Halloween. Oh my God, that movie's slow and boring. I've watched Friday the 13th. I've seen like three or four of Friday the 13th movies. I can't remember which one's which, and they're really not that good. And I guess those are more in the slasher genre. This is definitely a different kind of horror movie. I mean, Jaws is also considered a horror movie. You want to be scared of bodies of water for the rest of your life. Watch Jaws. This movie is a decent exorcism movie. So if you want to watch an exorcism movie, which are normally very scary for me, but still be able to sleep at night, I would recommend The Exorcist.
I think I survived it. I don't think that I am cursed. Oh, please. I hope I'm not. See, and then my brain goes, did I jinx it? I watched this movie and now I'm talking about it. Am I? Oh, no. And, okay, so I'm going to go. Thank you all for your recommendations for movies. Tell me what you thought about The Exorcist. If you've seen this movie at Play Katie Play on Twitter or come say hi to me on Twitch at Katie Peters Plays. And until next time, avoid Ouija boards. If you want to hang out with me more or if you just want to yell at me for my thoughts on a specific movie, I stream over on Twitch at www.twitch.tv slash katiepetersplays. Also, feel free to follow and chat with me on Twitter at PlayKatiePlay and on Instagram at katiepetersplays. Music written and performed by Mark Can Do It. Katie Hasn't Seen That is a part of the Geek Generation Network. Until next time, keep your popcorn warm for me.